You need to love yourself right where you are. And then you need to dare to want more for yourself. Human beings are meant to aspire. Girl, you've got questions. Questions about your body and how to feel good in it, about your hormones and how to keep them in check. Questions about your sex life and your whole health. Can you imagine having a best girlfriend who was also a triple board certified OBGYN? A girlfriend doctor you could call and ask or tell her anything. Someone who could show you how to live any stage of life before, during, or after menopause in a big, bold, and beautiful way. Well, friends, I'm your girlfriend doctor. I believe you were meant to flourish and shine, to embrace life and awaken to all its possibilities. Let's get there together. Welcome to our show. Happy New Year, everyone. I'm excited to be starting off this new year, Keto Green, and continuing the momentum moving forward as we build healthy community and feel supported. I mean, that's what healthy community is about. I love the quote in this old, ancient Middle Eastern proverb that says, when you have your health, you have a thousand wishes. And when you don't have your health, you have but one. And that is to have your health, right? So we're in this together. And I, I really loved in my last Girlfriend Doctor Live uh, show, just the, the reinforcement from members of the club. Um, so my last Girlfriend Doctor Club Live that we do, we do two a month live with video. So I get to see my members and, and can listen to them. And you know, we do it through Zoom and it's really a great way to connect although virtually connect and we really are working towards the, the uh, wish for the new year is that we all get to meet in person this year. So, so I'm excited about that. And, um, but the, the thing is that many of, of the club members really have a strong resonating gratitude that if they hadn't been part of this community, they don't know where they'd be this year, but they are better this year than last year. And, and granted, we've had a hard year, right? We've had a hard year. One of my reasons for creating the Girlfriend Doctor Club was to build this community together. When we're in it together, we're not left hanging or on our own and struggling. And, and, it, it, and when we disconnect from that, that is where we start to spiral sometimes more. Really want to create that. And, and again, we're, we're in this together. I'm in it with you. I'm excited to share with you one of my good girlfriends that I've known since, gosh, 2004. 2004, I met this wonderful woman. And she has certainly been a mentor and influential in my life to actually bring my message into the virtual world from seeing patients 24-7. I mean, where I, I was able to take care of, you know, 10,000 patients in person over my years with um, JJ, I, JJ Virgin's help, my guest today, an expert nutritionist, I mean, just amazing mentor, leader, and influencer, but I've been able to influence millions. My message has been blessed to reach millions through my books, my programs, my products, and my, you know, social media. So um, I couldn't have actually done any of this without her guidance and inspiration and ethical moral fortitude i mean she just is is so amazing so today we're going to be talking about 14 we're going to hit on 14 key uh steps themes to improve our metabolism to get metabolically healthy we want to burn calories when we sleep we want to remove the obstacles that are keeping us from getting there so if you're not familiar with JJ I'll share with you that she is a prominent TV and media personality whose previous features include co-host TLC's Freaky Eaters if you ever saw that she was two years as the on-camera nutritionist for weight loss challenges on Dr. Phil she's had numerous appearances on PBS, Dr. Oz, Rachel Ray, Access Hollywood, and The Today Show. She um, speaks on stage all over the country. She's spoken with notables such as Seth Godin, Lisa Nichols, Gary Vaynerchuk, and Mark Hyman, as well as Mary Morrissey. She's the author of four New York Times best-selling books, including The Virgin Diet, The Virgin Diet Cookbook, and JJ Virgin's Sugar Impact Diet 
and the JJ Virgin Sugar Impact Diet Cookbook. Her latest book is Warrior Mom, Seven Secrets to Bold, Brave Resilience. And this shows caregivers everywhere how to be strong, positive leaders for their families while exploring the inspira inspirational lessons JJ learned as she fought for her own son's life. She has Ask the Health Expert podcast with over 8 million downloads and growing. She also uh, writes for Rodale Wellness and Mind Body Green and other major blogs and is the founding um, of the premier health entrepreneur event called the Mindshare Summit, where I am ac actively involved. She has given a gift in this um, talk. It is at jjvirgin.com forward slash seven foods to start there and remove some of the seven foods that create weight loss resistance for us. So I am uh, excited to share her with you. Let me introduce her now. Well, Happy New Year, JJ, and welcome back to the Girlfriend Doctor Show. Thank you. Excited to be back, my friend. We have known each other a long time. We have. Known I know, each and other. you just look younger and younger. It's amazing. <laughs> likewise, likewise. <laughs> I can't believe we've celebrated fifty-year-old birthday together, and now you know, looking forward to the next decade, and just it's getting better and better. Really, I mean, like we can say that. Like I feel like I'm celebrating more now than I did in my forties. I wish I'd known. You know, there, there's all that trepidation of like the big five oh. If someone just said the there's a little switch that gets flipped when you hit that that makes life so much better. Why didn't someone tell us? <laughs> Holy smokes, you know? <laughs> oh, oh, totally. I, I totally know that. And the big thing is being once we're once we realize that that like reproductive hormonal cloud shifts, there's a complete um a complete i want to say freedom like liberty is the word that i'm trying to think it feels liberating i was gonna say yeah liberation um i just think there's something that happens where you just don't really care what people think anymore <laughs> well <That. you're> <laughs> lack of tolerance <laughs> that is that is so true uh and, and so like you have been an icon in this field so not only my girlfriend and um just a leader inspiring bringing community together the importance of community we're going to touch on a few things that there's so much you know we can talk about and i know my audience wants to hear like, what do we need to do now what are the smallest steps that we really need to make in our 50s and beyond that is going to improve our metabolic health and staying committed to that as the as as time goes on yeah you know i think the biggest thing that happens kind of starts in the 40s but definitely feel in the 50s you that margin for error of error that you had before you know where you could stay out all night or you could just you know maybe drink too much and you're like, yeah, bounce back. Like the bounce back is kind of bounce a little bit, <laughs> not bouncing back, right? It's like bouncing maybe an inch. So I think one of the things we have to think of here is that we have to prioritize putting ourselves and our self-care first. And it was funny, we got invited to a football game the other night and Tim and I looked at each other and we went, well, the football game starts at 8.20 at night. That means we're not gonna get home until like 12.30 at night. It's a Sunday, forget it. And I thought, God, have we just gotten old where we just won't do this? But I just don't wanna mess with my sleep. You know, I know what it does to me. So that's the first thing. And you know, when you really look at being at your best, cause I do believe that you can be in your best shape, your best health at 50 and beyond. And you kind of alluded to it. Once you're, you get through menopause and everything gets out of crazy zone, chaotic zone into stable, gosh, it's so much easier to be a non-cycling person. <laughs> it's just <laughs> so much easier. Life is so much better as a non-cycling person. Um, but you do want to think about, all right, what do I need to do to get healthy? And you know, I really focus on weight loss and weight regain. And what's interesting is I think of it differently, like a, a healthy body burns off fat and holds on to and builds muscle. And so if you're carrying around extra weight, not only is it not healthy, um, but in order for you to lose it, and I see this so often now, in order for you to lose weight, you have to be metabolically healthy. 
if you've got elevated blood sugar and insulin, if you've got high toxic burden, if your thyroid's low, if you've got an autoimmune disease going on, you may struggle to lose weight. And that actually should just be an indicator for you that you need to go back and look at your overall health and what you need to heal. Because it's really weight loss is a side benefit to a metabolism working well, right? I think we need to get the emotional part out of all that. Like I tell people, they should step on the scale every day. And, and I've literally had some flack of, I can't do that emotionally. It destroys me. And I'm like, this is where you need to be the observer, not the judge. Yes. And yes. realize the scale is just a thing that you're going, huh, that's so crazy that I went up four pounds from yep. yesterday because I did not eat four pounds worth of food. Right. So clearly I had, <laughs> I had a bad response to something I ate. It didn't work for me. And you're curious, you're a curious observer, not a mean judgy you know, girl, right? Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. And I think that's what's so, so powerful is what gets measured gets managed. And the times of my life I've been without the scale, it's been, yeah, that, you know, it was without the scale, so Hurricane Matthew, Hurricane Irma, and um, with, you know, that consequence of moving five times, mold mm -hmm. toxicity in the middle of it. And then, of course, mm -hmm. wearing stretchy workout clothes all the time. The stretchy workout clothes, which, <laughs> I am in at this moment, but I get up every single morning. I go to the bathroom, I step on the scale, then I go meditate. And it's just, that's what I do 90% of the time. And um, it's the reason I do it is because I had a season where I was just wearing workout clothes every single day and I did not get on the scale. And then I got on the, I went to try some pants on in my closet and they didn't fit. So then I grabbed another pair thinking they'd just come out of the wash and another pair and another pair. And I'm like, holy smokes, how'd I gain 10 pounds? And I just never was aware of it. So, you know, the scale can do a couple great things. It, we know that people who weigh in every day keep the weight off um, and that's been shown. But the other thing it can do is help you connect the dots between what you're eating and how it's working for you. And that's really important because well, I feel like so many of the diet programs out there disconnect us from you know how food works for you like does it give you energy does it help you um de bloat right one of the things you've always said is our body is a chemistry lab not a bank account and i think that's really powerful in your book that where you addressed food sensitivities the seven key food sensitivities i mean i was full-time practicing clinician that was game changing for my audience to keep it simple, right? Because we did all this modified elimination diet, all this, you know, decrease your toxic burden, let's detox. And it's really can be very, very complicated. What you did was simplify it to the seven most common foods that do, do create that inflammation, that three pound, four pound weight gain overnight. So yes. let's, let's talk about those seven foods. Yeah, what's so interesting is um, I see the average person you know, losing seven pounds in a week when you do that, which is crazy. So I used to go around the country. I was teaching a course. I don't know if you ever came to it when my course on overcoming weight loss resistance. Oh yeah. That's where, um, in Florida with, um, uh, uh, was Ike and Betty Murray, uh, Betty, um, God, isn't it funny? Rebecca, <laughs> Rebecca, 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 Becky Murray, Murray and, yeah. and Marcel pick. And anyway, so part of that was using lab testing. And, you know, one of the labs in there was, was identifying food sensitivities. And I remember just kind of going, first off, the lab took three weeks to come back. And so there you were waiting with nothing to do. And then I started to see that the labs always had the same food show up and they were very different from what you would see when you did a, a classic elimination diet that has been used for decades. And I go, why are we so focused on the minors, things like strawberries and oranges and shellfish when those are super outliers and most people know if they have an issue with them, it, when the majors that showed up on this testing and then through another test, because gluten doesn't show up this way, the majors were gluten and dairy and eggs and then corn, so, corn soy and peanuts. And then of course, when I first started doing it and I didn't pull out sugar <laughs> and boy, what I discovered was first of all, don't just pull foods out. I stopped doing the drop and I moved it to swap. So now everything is how do you swap these foods? And 
you've got to get rid of the sugar and artificial sweeteners because those are doing a lot of disruption to the gut that's actually creating the intolerances, making your gut leakier so that it's more reactive to all of these things, making you more inflammatory. And man, you know, I mean, doing a keto diet, one of the fastest ways that you can really start to see a change in energy and blood sugar and, and fat loss is by lowering what I call lowering your sugar impact is looking at carbs in general, because all carbs except for fiber turn to sugar, and then getting the ones that are mainlining sugar into your body and getting them out right away, and then really limiting the other slow, low impact carbs, depending again, where you need to be, like, are you in a full keto ketogenic cycle? Are you cycling on low carb? Where are you? Well, this is where the nutritionists, the RDs, sorry, registered dietitians come after us. Mm. Oh my gosh, JJ, I've never got more hate comments than I have on TikTok when I said keto for women over 50. And so like, there's a right way to do keto and a wrong way to do keto. Of course, my, my think keto green or keto alkaline, you're like, not keto alkaline. No one knows what that means. Call it keto green. Hence the uh, brand keto green and our keto green 16 and all of that stuff. So, so, but it, it is, is really the, and I, I, I'm going after the diabetic community. I want them to get keto green. I want them to focus on alkalinity. And after I, yeah. I just <laughs> interviewed David Perlmutter, his new book, Drop Acid, coming out. Mm -hmm. And it is, it is so clear, the more alkaline our urine pH is, the more we're clearing uric acid. I mean, this right. makes sense. And here we're seeing physiologic reason to improve, a physiologic way to improve our metabolism. And when we get off course from doing that, I know I definitely... When I get off course from testing, then it is, it's guessing and things fall out of balance again. And that's, that is right. a challenge. It's a constant challenge because food has been a, a, a huge part of my life growing up. My mom was a baker and, you know, that's the way we express love and, you know, and, and affection. And, and that's been a really big, um, uh, per, you know, a big, I don't want to say obstacle to overcome a big um awareness that i've brought into i have had to bring into my life and to think okay because it used to be a meal has not been eaten until you've had dessert i mean that is a mine too day. my friend <laughs> i start the day with pop tarts but my mom has i mean still to this day when i go home she always has some seized candy stash somewhere oh, and yum. she Entenmann's little, little those little sweet rolls and always ice cream and you always had dessert and you know, so I had to retrain that. And I think for so many of us, we have all of these memories and traditions around food that it gets challenging. And it, it is why I, I'm very anti-diet. I believe that we should yes. use diet short-term therapeutically so that we can learn what works for us and then pull it into our daily routine. Just like we would try different exercises and go, oh, that works great. I'll bring it into my daily routine, right? And so I think we do that. One thing that I'm really not thrilled about right now is, is I think I have a different idea about anti-diet than what the anti-diet culture is. My idea of anti-diet is you're not dieting as a hobby. You use diets like go do keto green 16, see what works in there for you. Use that cycling into your life, bring it cross train your diet, just like you would your exercise and use that where it would work. It's rather than no, never do any of those things because 76% of us are overweight or obese right now. And only about 12% of the population is actually metabolically healthy. So we don't, we can't say no, we're, you know, like bad Wait, on all that of this. 7%, only 7% of the population. Is Probably 12%. I just did a lecture, a, a, an interview with a um, cardiologist who gave me all the stats on metabolically healthy, except that the numbers he gave me, I don't consider to be metabolically healthy. So I was like, woo. All right. Cause he was like, you know, if a woman's waist is, is 35 32. Or above, that's and I'm probably, like, that's I'm like 35. Wait, and can we not, put a height into that? I heard him say the same thing. I, I, I know I've always been confused. I remember asking, I remember who was it? I think it was Stephen Masley. I'm like, Height has to factor in here. I has to would not have the in. same, you know, I'm six feet tall. But the other side of, of that culture is this whole idea of intuitive eating. And yes. I think intuitive eating could work really well if you were metabolically healthy, if you'd done a detox, if you'd gotten rid of processed addictive foods, if you're eating clean, 
then you can really hear what's working for you and connect the dots but that's not what intuitive eating is doing that's not what Let's it's doing and physiology is willpower right so when you're having uh the the three meals three snack culture means destructive and what is being taught still today by the american diabetes association to diabetics is still not helpful I mean, they're afraid to go do a 12 hour intermittent fast. I mean, I don't even call 12 hours intermittent fast at this point. I don't either. That's right? just the way that is the bare bones minimum of how you should eat is stop eating three to four hours before bed. Do not go to bed later and, you know, wait for at least an hour. Now I used to say eat within an hour of waking up. Now I say, wait at least an hour after waking up to eat. And ideally you get up, you meditate, you do some fasted workout. It could be just a fasted, simple little hit workout. And, you know, then you have whatever you're going to have. And so it's two to three meals, zero snacks, lots of fluid in between, and ideally a walk after dinner. Amen, sister. Amen, sister. That walk after dinner, I've got to add in. Um, it's so hard to get in when you're like, you know, eh, I know. I know. Cause <laughs> that's, that's where you need a dog. Yeah. When you get to your house, get a dog, get a dog that's going to look at you with those eyes and you're just not going to be able to say no. Well, <laughs> and one of the things like recognizing too, like we talked about the things that are, are creating a problem, um, mold toxicity. I mean, mold toxicity, a huge issue. We had um, a ward, you know, it's like, it, it is so prevalent and really can disrupt our physiology, knocks out our thyroid function. And so, you know, clearing from mold toxicity is, um, is one of those things, right? It doesn't have anything to do with the food we're putting in our mouth. But well, there's a whole lot of things that can get in the way of you losing weight and cause you gain weight. I mean, any kind of toxins, that's what we're breathing in, what we're touching, what we're drinking, what we're eating. So there's so many different places to get tox toxins. I remember I was at, gosh, a lecture for ACAM years ago, and they it was all it was three days of toxic stuff. And the scariest lecture of all was mold toxicity. I was like, holy smokes! And it is so prevalent and still so underdiagnosed. It's crazy. You and know, then and, what do you and, do about it if that's your primary residence and you're stuck? I have, I have a client, a client for over 10 years that know that was the issue, right? And she's like, what can mm. I do? What can I do? Like, you know, you can't get well in the same environment you got sick in. No, that's a great quotable there. You know, so toxins are a huge one. And, and it's interesting how everything plays together. You know, toxins can cause insulin resistance, lower your thyroid function, cause you to be more estrogenic. And then if you've got lower thyroid function, that's going to get in the way of you losing weight. If you get stressed, it can lower your thyroid function. That can make you more insulin resistant. If you're stressed, you're not sleeping well, that'll make you more insulin resistance, you know, just like, wow. And, and put them all together and put them all together. Right. So we're, Which we're is usually how it is. One other thing that, that you, you encourage to, as, as I do, it's that shake, that shake a day. Yes. And, you know, when I first started with all of this, um, it was because I was breaking and now I call it break. This is how you're going to break your fast. But what I discovered was the first meal in the morning is where most people tended to blow it. And they blew it thinking they were doing healthy options. They had that little muffin. And I always say a muffin is just a cupcake without the frosting. Oh, wait, JJ, this is, this is live, right? Ava has hi. to come say hi to you. And, and <laughs> hi, this Ava. is what happens when you're on vacation and you're 13. She's just waking up. It is one o'clock. She's video afternoon. bombing. Um, so, you know, <laughs> if you look at so many of the breakfast choices out there, cereal and milk and toast with jam, and um, muffins and danishes, it's just garbage. So that to me was like, all right, what's the, if you could swap that, because if you start the day off that way, there's something called the second meal phenomenon. And, and we all know it. If you start the day and you had a muffin and a latte, you're like, I'm screwed. Like now I'm hungry another two hours later and my blood sugar is just off the rails the rest of the day. You cannot come out of it. And so you need to make sure that when you break the fast, you break the fast with healthy, with clean protein, healthy fats and fiber from slow, low carbs and veggies. So this the shake is just so easy to make sure that happens and to not blow it breakfast, right? 
Yes, and one other thing too is one thing I realized when wearing that continuous glucose monitor for you know practically 12 months, you know, on and off for 12 months and writing Keto Green 16 was that coffee does that to me. Black coffee. I know. Zero I, calories. I, just, I did this. Zero <laughs> sugar. I know, I know, but it's terrible. And it is still, it is still that. Now I'm like, okay, Sunday morning, it is that is my coffee day. But so I, you know enjoy a cup of coffee after the time I no, break consider fast, this. but never before now. But here's how you hack it. So you get up in the morning, you don't have coffee till after you meditate. You have coffee because that actually is going to help you get a better workout in. We know caffeine's an ergogenic aid. When you're working out, you're gonna suck that, you know, you're gonna pull that blood sugar back down so you can hack it with a little, with a little workout. So that's one way to, to do it. Yeah, and workout in general and wearing that continuous glucose monitor. That continuous glucose out. wander, holy smokes. What seriously, a different time. seriously. I, I mean, I really, I keep thinking of how to, how to be able to get that to everyone without having to prescribe it for everyone. I mean, it really should be an OT over the counter. It should right? I mean, why, counter. why can't you know stuff? What's the difference between that and a scale and a blood pressure cuff? Yeah. Like, and you can still do a little, like you can get your own little, blood sugar pricky machine. So why on earth can't you just get these things? It's crazy. Yes. I yes. think, can't you order one directly from NutriSense? NutriSense, yes, you can. And part of their membership program to customize a plan with you. So that is true. But I would say for most everyone, if you ask your doctor, look, I want that freestyle Libre glucose, continuous glucose monitor for biohacking, just write me a prescription. I won't buy like don't file it with insurance because then you're going to be identified as probably yeah. pre-diabetic diabetic, which is terrible because I used to prescribe metformin to my PCOS patients. And one patient came to me, Dr. Anna, they denied my health insurance because they say I'm diabetic because I'm on metformin. I'm like, oh my God, wow. oh my God, that is mafiosa medicine. So you guys, hmm. like it, it is worth, I mean, it's $80 to buy two that'll cover you for a month and it will tell you so much information in that month about what works for you and what doesn't work for you. Yep. Combine that amazing. checking urine pH and pushing your body into ketosis, and that's game changing. But I am like the diabetes population is increasing, and um, and and this is like this is where there's so much misinformation. Diabetics feel like okay, keto's a bad word, or there's the um, that consensus. There's so many eating disorders in the diabetic community that you know that even talking about diet or bringing down to two meals or eliminating snacks or whatever it may be, it's, it, it generates this dietitian backlash. <laughs> but the thing is, if you don't talk about it, then, then we're just getting worse. I remember are getting worse. hearing statistics a couple of years ago. I wish I could remember where I read it, but it was, it was a very clear thing that said, if we don't change our trajectory, 100% of the US population will be diabetic by the year 2030. And I thought that is the most outrageous claim, no way, no how, BS, <laughs> right? And now, you know, I did that interview with that guy and he was talking about 12% of the population being metabolically healthy and PS, what he said was metabolically healthy, which was fasting blood sugar of 100, your waist was under 35 as a woman, your triglycerides were under 150, your blood pressure was under 130 over 80. I'm like, I don't consider that metabolically healthy. So, you know, you start to look and go, if, if now we've got 76% of the population overweight or obese, and we've got this level of stress that we are all under, you know, what on earth uh, is this trajectory? Like, are we going to get to hundred percent obesity before 2030? Cause it's definitely looking attainable at this point. So not talking about it is a disservice to everybody focusing instead of any kind of body shame. Cause I believe that, you know, you need to love yourself right where you are. And then you need to dare to want more for yourself. You have to aspire. Human beings are meant to aspire to more, to greatness. So then you just need the path to heal your metabolism so that you can burn off fat. You can have stable blood sugar. You can build muscle, right? That just, and that doesn't happen if we all just scoot around the issue and don't talk about it and try to make um, higher and higher levels that used to be considered 
unhealthy or disease states as okay. When I was in grad school, um, the ideal body composition ranges were way lower than they are now. And I'm like, why did ideal go from being 22% for females to 27 to 28% for females? That's not right. We didn't change genetically. We're the same as we were as a human species as we were 20 years ago. <laughs> so what the heck, right? Well, and uh, there's so much more to that. I'm going to just change the optimal from the metabolically healthy definition and see if you concur. Fasting blood sugar below 85, waist below 32, but we need a height. We need some. Yeah, we, we got to get a height a component. Height component. You, you know, it is not fair. I'm six feet. I I'm should not have the eight, same. Large boned. Right right? My shoulders are, you know, like all that stuff. So like, I'm, if I'm, at, you know, at my thinnest waist, it was 28, but it's 32 probably now. So that's my 32. But anyway, <laughs> I got to measure that. What gets measured gets managed. I've got to put that tape right. measure on. I mean, if it's once a year that I do that, probably more frequently I need to do uh, Once a week is what I like to have people do. Oh, gosh. Okay. Once per week. My friend. Got it. And do it with the hip too, because you want not yes, just your weight, but the ratio. The ratio. Below right. one point below one for women point point zero eight men is point one eight. women is point eight point zero eight is a point eight point, point zero eight, eight. yeah point waist, zero eight. <laughs> eight, yeah thank you for reminding me waist hip ratio below 0 0.8 and triglycerides below 75 hemoglobin a1c below 5.3 yeah and i so what i would also look at add into these numbers that i think are important um, I think it's important to have blood pressure 110 over 70. And I also think that you have to look at body composition and 25% being the max for a woman. I also like in terms of looking at vital signs, I want to look at a vitamin D. Wait, as a wait, woman. what's 25%? Oh, body composition, how much body fat, body lean fat body percentage. mass, body fat percent. Um, so the other important ones, vitamin D. Yes you know, 50 or above triglyceride HDL ratio. So not just triglycerides, but let's look at that ratio. Um, you know, and looking at HDL, of course, as another one. And then, you know, then I think we have it. HDL um, above 50, right? Yeah. So HDL for a woman 50 and up yep. and then for men 40 and up, mm -hmm. I don't know if it's 40 and up or above 40. Um, but I mean, one. to me, those are like, those are the bare, those are the bare minimums Again, of all these things. That hemoglobin A1C below 5.3 and, and wake up with the alkaline urine pH of seven or greater and go to sleep with one. I'm going to add that. And then here's there. what's great. You monitor all those things. You go, huh, I'm looking okay in some of these factors. Now, if, you, if one of these factors is off, it, it's the precursor to a bunch of the factors getting off, right? So then you can go, all right, so... So what's going on here? My triglycerides are elevated. Okay, what can I do to bring my triglycerides down? Well, look for where fructose is getting into the diet is the easy one, right? You know, and start to do, start to bring down the fructose, bring down the overall carbs, and, but, and, but especially bring down the fructose because that really kicks those triglycerides up. So it allows you to really pinpoint what you need to do so you can fix it fast because any of those things could get you on a slow snowball going down the bad metabolic hill. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. Any one of those things. And again, emphasizing that hemoglobin A1C below 5.3. I mean, I, again, diabetes on both sides of my family. So I've seen the destruction of, of the disease of diabetes and our current medical situation. I was talking to someone recently, a man who's 60 years old and his hemoglobin A1C is 5.3. He's like, oh, or, or sorry, 6.3, 6.3. 6 and he's mm -hmm. like, they say I'm not diabetic yet. I'm like, oh my God. Yeah. And every yeah. Let's year, just wait and watch. Exactly. Just wait and watch. He goes, it's diet controlled. I'm like, that is out of control. That is oh. out of control. Diet control diabetes, please get it below 5.4, 5 at least. Get me to 5.5, 5.4, 5.3. Really want that 5.3 to be that high number. And I'm coming from a place where, JJ, when you, you probably, you know, not long after you met me, but mine was 5.7. It's 4.8 now. 4. Mine's 5. been, I mean, what has mine been? I'm trying to think. I've, it's been at least... I like to sit for myself down at five to 5.2. The thing that's pushed mine up is stress. Oh yeah. 
measuring. So, that. and that's a great, <laughs> another great measurement. If your diet's dialed in really well, and yet your fasting blood sugar is elevated, your hemoglobin A1C is elevated, but your triglycerides look good, your insulin sensitivity looks good, then you need to really look at stress. And that's why it's so great to monitor these numbers because they give you a story and they'll point to what, where in your lifestyle do you need to make some shifts so that it doesn't get worse. This episode of the show is sponsored by Mighty Maca Plus. Mighty Maca Plus is the superfood green drink with over 30 amazing ingredients, including adaptogens and kosher organic maca from Peru that really work together to help support your body, balance your hormones, decrease inflammation, and give you that energy. Stop that three o'clock lull as well as help you get a better night's sleep. So if you're feeling sluggish, struggling with PMS, brain fog, hot flashes, low libido, or other issues, you know, it is time to try Mighty Maca Plus. It is just what the doctor ordered. To try Mighty Maca Plus risk-free, go to dranna.com and use show 10 to get 10% off your first order. And so let's talk about how to get metabolically healthy. How do you coach um, to individuals, especially postmenopausal to get metabolically. And I always say, if it works for a postmenopausal menopausal woman, it works for everyone. Yeah. 10 Everybody. Times better. <laughs> 10 times better. So um, I think that what's really important to do is only one thing at a time, because otherwise you'll do nothing. And you see this, especially now where people are like, okay, it's the new year. I am going to start exercising. I'm going to meditate. I'm going to take my supplements. I need to start doing the sauna. I'm in a cold plunge and it's like ridiculous, like to get one thing into your routine. So I like to start with food because the fastest way you can change your, your health is change with it's at the end of your fork. And for me, I always start with identifying your hidden food intolerances because I know that that will help you drop a lot of inflammation and feel better fast. So, you know, on the virgin diet, the average person loses seven pounds in the first seven days, and it doesn't come right back on because they're not eating those high inflammatory foods, the high five foods that, that created that problem in the first place. So that's the first step. And then I have them lower their sugar impact. And really when you look at it, when you're identifying your hidden food intolerances, so you connect the dots, so you know exactly which foods work for you and which foods don't. And through swaps, you're healing your gut, you're detoxifying and finding foods that you love. Then you move into lowering your sugar impact and really getting dialed in on that protein, fat, fiber trifecta on the plate so that you're able to do two to three meals a day. You're able to go and do intermittent fasting. Again, we both agree 12 hours is the minimum. I think most people can to go to Yeah. I mean, most people can do 14 pretty easily. And then we just push them up to 16 a couple of days a week. Or for, say, if you're doing a, a detox, because it's a great way to do an advanced cellular detox and get the trash out. So the lowering your sugar impact prepares you perfectly for moving into keto green 16 and being able to do those intermittent fasting cycles without any kind of pain. <laughs> uh, uh -huh. No, absolutely. It's and basically, we just cross trained. You know, I, I, I have been scratching my head as to why we don't think this way in diet yet. And, you know, in the, in the exercise world, we have routines that we create and they're cross training routines. So you probably do some walking, maybe some hit training, some resistance training and some core or mindfulness training. So I know for me, I do the Peloton, I do hit training on the Peloton or my Stairmaster. And then I do resistance training with weights and TRX. And then I go to a yoga class that also is yoga chill with all this mindful stuff in it. And then I walk my dog. So that's to me how, how I cross train my exercise. And then we need to do, that's my routine over there, my fitness routine. Now my eating routine is very similar. I cross train in my short intermittent fasting days, my keto time, my some days I go more plant. So you cross train your diet just like you would cross train your exercise. And this is so critical. You know, my next book coming out, April 12th is um, hey. Menu Pause. And what I did with Menu Pause, because, you know, we, we started with the hormone fi fix, right? Started with the hormone fix. 
and really working on that keto green concept, 10 day keto green detox, and then keto green 16, let's push that 13 hour intermittent fast to 16 hour intermittent fast and let's simplify it. So, you don't, you know, people aren't angry at me because of the shopping list. So hence 16 foods, 16 hour intermittent fast, 16 day plan, right? And now, you know, like you hit plateaus. And when you hit that plateaus, how do you break through the plateaus? Well, what is creating a barrier? So menu pause is five, six day plans to break through that plateau. So changing different things up. One is, one is a carb up plan. Like, okay, well, we need some more sweet potatoes in here. We need something we need to, you know, so sometimes we need that. And others are, are really getting more carnivore-ish or autoimmune protocol based. And another is a fasting plan. We just had one woman do the six day fasting plan, lose 12 pounds before Thanksgiving, only gain two pounds back during Thanksgiving. Nice. It's a month out, but all that inflammation weight, It's right? cross training. Cross That's exactly training. what I'm talking about. And all these different ways you change cross your Cross train your diet. <laughs> right. So in the diet world, the reason people say diets don't work is because what they were doing was a caloric restricted diet long term. That will never work. No. You know what happens, your body downshifts, you get stuck. However, diets done correctly do absolutely work. And the way you're teaching it is exactly the thing. Do something short term for a therapeutic result. Maybe it's to lower your autoimmune titers. Maybe it's to balance your blood sugar. Maybe it's to heal your gut. Maybe it's to detoxify. Whatever that focus is, do that thing. Then what, what in what you did, you need to pull into your everyday routine. Maybe it is that you need to do this advanced detox a couple times a year, and that goes into your routine, right? So this is the way, the new way of thinking about all of this is that you're not dieting as a hobby. You're using diets short-term and therapeutically. And that's why I'm anti, it's it, it truly anti-dieting. It just doesn't sound so good as a book title. Um, well, but yeah, and we've always said this, right? It's not just about what you eat, when you eat, the different types of foods you may be eating, right? That, that food sensitivities that we're doing, when we're eating, too early, too late, um, who you're eating with <laughs> yes. to stress you out, right? So it, it's a lifestyle approach. And that's what you've always you've always, um, you know, uh, really em emphasized in all of your work, which is amazing, JJ. I love being with you and I could talk with you, my girlfriend, all day. And so um, please tell our audience where they can connect with your messaging more. And I have been oh, following sure. your TikTok, by the way, crack me up. <laughs> I'm working on it. We're like, we have, we have really doubled down on video now. We've got, we're building YouTube up. We're starting to drop a video every week. We're building up TikTok. Uh, and Instagram. So we are, we are doing it. And um, I have a great seven foods cheat sheet. That would probably be the most helpful at jjvirgin.com forward slash the number seven foods. So seven foods. Um, and that is on my website again, jjvirgin.com forward slash seven foods. And um, yeah, we've been getting, we are really focused on getting actionable information out every single week multiple times a week. So, you know, jump on in there, follow me, comment. It's, we're having a bunch of fun. I it. love it. I love it. So jjvirgin.com forward slash seven foods, and we'll provide that link and more in the show notes. So be sure to check those out and check out JJ Virgin. I'm going to say bye privately to JJ and we will be right back on the Girlfriend Doctor Show. JJ, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. It truly is so fun when I get to talk to a girlfriend who's also my mentor and influencer. You know, she read the, wrote the foreword to one of my books and I just highly admire JJ Virgin. She is in it for everyone and, you know, humbly shares her experiences, her ups and downs in life, her traumas, tragedy, her successes and brings us all in along the journey with her. I've written so many things down. I think there are a few key points I'm just gonna emphasize here for summary, because I do want you to come back through and listen again, listen again. But we hit on you know, some key topics. Number one, weigh in every day, right? It helps keep the weight off. Number two, do the elimination of those seven key foods we mentioned, gluten, dairy, eggs, corn, soy, peanuts and sugar. And then three, swap, make that swap to something healthy. So you're not feeling the deprivation 
issues that create the binging and create the rebounding. And we don't want that. And number four, restricting carbohydrates. So that leads us to number five, get keto green. And number six, create memories and traditions that are uh, substitute for the food memories and traditions or replace them in a really healthy way like today and you to come to my YouTube channel to watch but I will be making my um, my I call it my apple pie verse I'll be making a keto green essentially apple pie and uh, very healthful low sugar delicious yummy apple pie and it's based on my apple pie verse which comes from uh, my life verse which is second peter chapter one verse five through eight and it talks about faith, you know it starts with faith and from faith to add goodness good to goodness add knowledge to knowledge add patience or perseverance right like we want to persevere we need to wait it out right make sure that incubation period and be patient at the same time and with that add kindness and to kindness add you know this like this giving affectionate brotherly love that we're giving to others including people in i call it a welcoming generosity and to that add um, agape love that that unconditional love. And I want everyone to receive that. And so I call it my apple pie verse. You'll have to come to my YouTube channel and check that out. All right, so I got distracted. So number seven, cross train your diet. Let's be one of the 12% and let's increase that population of metabolically healthy individuals with intuitive eating. Um, versus misinformation, intuitively eating because we're physiologically healthy and not um, having the high and low blood sugars, which cause us to intuitively binge eat, right? That doesn't make sense. And number eight, stop eating three to four hours before bed. Number nine, do a fasting workout, exercise that fasting workout. Number 10, um, breaking fast with that, you know, clean protein, healthy fats and fibers, the keto green way. Number 11, a shake a day. We know that uh, shakes can really help keep the weight loss off and help us because of the easy absorbing of nutrients. So hence your keto green shake in there too. Number 12, I wrote this down in my, was just emphasizing continuous glucose monitoring for everyone. That would be my platform. And number 13, look at the optimizing your, optimizing your, um, your metabolism, being metabolically healthy with those key parameters that we put in. And number 14, really focusing on that it's one step at a time, one step at a time that we do this. So what is your next right step from our conversation today? I am excited to be starting off this year with you. If you're not in our Keto Green 16 Challenge, please join us so you get information from the Keto Green 16 bundle at dranna.com. You'll see information there and also our Keto Green 16 Challenge group on Facebook. You need a couple things. You need my book, Keto Green 16, which is available in hard copy also on Kindle and audiobook. And um, there's a bunch of free bonuses that come with that. So when you go to my webpage at dranna.com, go to my books, go to the book page for Keto Green 16. There'll be a place where you will enter in your receipt number for your book. Let us know that you bought the book and there's extra bonuses there too. Get your Keto Green Shake and Mighty Maca bundle. It's a Keto Green 16 bundle with the urine test strips because we test don't we don't guess right we're going to test and not guess and checking that urine ph clearing uric acid from our system improving metabolism in improving at the health of our you know physiology in general so that we can kick out toxic fat and doing that together so building this community and of course to see me live monthly join my dark my girlfriend doctor club where our community is healthier this year than we started out last year and continuing to work on mind body and spirit together in a beautiful community in a way that we really cherish so i encourage you to continue to connect with me 
and uh, I look forward to your comments. I'm grateful for your reviews. I love your reviews. And I'm also grateful for your support and connection in my mission because through helping you and you following our, you know, and, and getting our products and books, we are continuing to help others. So celebrating through the Christmas season and of course all year in supporting the House of Hope, the House of Dawn, and the Garibay Bivens Foundation. So again, I am grateful for all of you being in the community. Happy New Year, and let's get Keto Green. Till next time, this is Dr. Anna. God bless you all. Thank you for watching this video. Be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel here and get those notifications and comment below. Let me know your thoughts, what you loved and what your action step is.